Somebody tried to explain it to me once to justify my squintiness, and, okay. and I did not understand it. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Good morning, uh, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for uh, joining us here this morning on a beautiful, beautiful Vancouver morning. I do want to begin by acknowledging that uh, this uh, announcement is taking place on the traditional territory of the Squamish, the Musqueam, and the Tsleil-Waututh people. As the Minister of Fisheries, Oceans, and the Canadian Coast Guard, and as the Member of Parliament for North Vancouver, I would like to welcome our Prime Minister to uh, back to Vancouver, his second home, along with all of our local Team Trudeau colleagues that have joined us here today. Importantly, I'd also like to recognize my colleague and exceptional leader of the Canadian Coast Guard, Commissioner Jeff Hutchinson. Ensemble, nous avons fait d'importants progrès pour renforcer la capacité de la garde côtière et soutenir son travail fondamental visant à protéger nos océans, nos, nos voies navigables et nos côtes. It is important to recognize that our Coast Guard officers not only provide marine safety services, such as search and rescue, but they also protect our coastal and marine environment every day. Following a decade of underfunding under the previous government, when we were elected in 2015, our government put the rebuild of our Coast Guard and marine protection at the top of our list. We have moved forward with this as a key priority. One of the very first things we did in the spring of 2016 was reopen the Kitsilano Coast Guard base. Since then, the Kits base has dealt with over 470 search and rescue calls and over 150 environmental responses. We have also identified strengthening the environmental response capacity of the Coast Guard as a key priority. We are actioning this by developing primary environmental response teams that are trained to strengthen the on-the-water Coast Guard response when we are faced with pollution incidents. To ensure a faster response time to marine incidents on the West Coast, we are undertaking a number of actions, including building a new logistics depot in Port Hardy that will house environmental response staff and equipment. With our capacity building agenda for the Canadian Coast Guard, today there are 5,700 Coast Guard jobs. The evidence-based enhancement of our Coast Guard is an example of our government's effective plan to protect our environment and enhance sustainable economic growth. Nous avons accompli tout ce travail et nous continuerons à la faire sous la direction de notre Premier ministre, mais aussi en travaillant main dans la main avec le Commissaire Hutchinson. The Commissioner has been a great partner on all of these projects and in building up the capacity of the Canadian Coast Guard on all three coasts. With that, it is a great pleasure for me to ask Commissioner Hutchinson to come up to say a few words. Thank you very much. Good morning. Prime Minister, Ministers, Members of Parliament, my fellow Flag Officers, ladies and gentlemen, and to all the members of the Canadian Coast Guard here and across our great country, Welcome to Vancouver and to this incredible West Coast morning. As the painter Vincent van Gogh once said, sailors know that the sea is dangerous and the storm terrible, but they have never found these dangers reason for remaining ashore. In fact, if you sail with the Canadian Coast Guard, those are the very reasons we cast the bow lines and we head out to sea, to find the sailor or the fisher or the kayaker or the hunter who faced the danger and found herself on the wrong side of it. Prime Minister, your fondness for this part of Canada is very well known. Today you see men and women who are ready, willing, trained and committed to work with our Indigenous partners and all mariners to keep our waters safe and our shores beautiful. La rumeur veut que la garde côtière soit d'apparence rouge et blanche, mais que, soit, mais que son corps soit vert. You will find this proud national institution full of people who care deeply about our oceans, our coastlines, and our abundant natural heritage. Indeed, this is a busy time for us as our inshore rescue boat crews are fired up and ready to respond in busy recreational boating and fishing areas. Technicians are climbing towers to make sure the big ocean-going ships have shipped ashore radio signals, and our large ship crews are working up and down this coast and all of our coasts supporting safe navigation, cutting-edge science, and marine emergency response. The women and men who are here today represent a Coast Guard that is hard at work, ensuring that Canadians have confidence in the stability and the promise of our maritime economy and in the safety of our waters. 
We feel the renewal in our organization that comes from recent investments in training, recruitment, new environmental response equipment, and small vessel replacement. We're energized as we recruit and welcome into our ranks Indigenous members, female members, LGBTQ2 members, new Canadians, veterans, new Coasties all. If you can serve, you can serve in the Canadian Coast Guard, and there's never been a better time to be in the Canadian Coast Guard. Monsieur le Premier Ministre, nous sommes toujours prêts pour nos missions. You have given us the mandate to strengthen marine preparedness and response. We're on it. You've placed a priority on a sustainable economy. We're on it. You've asked us to support reconciliation and Indigenous people, and we are humbled to contribute to that. Alors, sans plus attendre, je vous cède la parole. I invite you to share with us what's next for the Canadian Coast Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. Good morning, everyone. Let me start by acknowledging that we are on the traditional Coast Salish territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish peoples. Thank you for that warm introduction, Commissioner Hutchison. It's great to be here at the HMCS Discovery with our outstanding team of ministers and MPs from British Columbia. I also want to take a moment to recognize the incredible members of the Canadian Coast Guard that we have with us today. Thank you for joining us today. For almost 60 years, women and men like you have been keeping our waters safe, secure, and open. The work that you do saves lives, protects the environment, and helps our economy grow. Thank you for your service. I'm here today with some great news to share. This morning, we're announcing that we're taking an important step forward to support your work. Our government will be doing a full renewal of the Canadian Coast Guard fleet and creating new shipbuilding jobs right here in British Columbia. For more than a century, people on the West Coast and at shipyards across the country have been proudly building high-quality vessels, from wooden steamships in the early 1900s to cargo ships during the Second World War. So it only makes sense that for the new Coast Guard fleet, we're turning to workers here in Vancouver and across Canada to get the job done. This fleet renewal is going to create jobs in everything from ship design and engineering to construction, welding and inspection, while strengthening this world-class Canadian industry. Bien entendu, ces emplois n'aident pas seulement les gens à subvenir aux besoins de leur famille, ils permettent aussi de fournir à notre garde côtière les navires de grande qualité dont elle a besoin. Et il ne fait aucun doute qu'on a besoin de ces nouveaux navires. Lorsque l'ancien gouvernement conservateur était au pouvoir, pas un seul navire a été livré dans le cadre de la stratégie nationale de construction navale, une stratégie qu'on essaie d'améliorer en travaillant avec les chantiers navals. The women and men of the Coast Guard have been making do with, vessels, with the vessels they have, some of which are almost as old as the Coast Guard itself. But the ships just aren't up to the demands of the job, and that creates risks for their performance and significant extra costs. Canadians deserve better than having this fleet rust out, and dealing with this problem is long overdue. That's why we are doing a complete fleet renewal and investing to build 16 new multi-purpose vessels to replace aging ships, where the previous government only promised 10 and never funded them. These new vessels will do everything from icebreaking on the Great Lakes to fisheries patrol to conducting pollution response. This fleet renewal project will be anchored right here in British Columbia, creating certainty and long-term viability for the Vancouver shipbuilding industry, which means even more good middle-class jobs down the road. In fact, the folks at the Vancouver shipyards are already hard at work on the offshore fisheries science vessels for the Coast Guard. And to meet an urgent gap for the existing fleet, we're going to procure two Arctic and offshore patrol ships for the Coast Guard, which will be built by the Halifax shipyard. Now, 
Canada's two existing shipyards don't have the capacity to deliver the fleet renewal by themselves. So we're also starting a competitive process for a third yard to help build ships when they're needed. Les deux chantiers navals actuels du Canada n'ont pas la capacité nécessaire pour assurer à eux seuls le renouvellement de la flotte de la garde côtière. C'est pourquoi on lance également un processus concurrentiel pour un troisième chantier qui contribuera à la construction de navires lorsqu'on en aura besoin. En tant que Canadiens, on sait à quel point que nos voies maritimes et nos océans sont importants. En plus d'être des espaces naturels qui font partie de notre identité nationale, ce sont des réseaux de commerce essentiels à notre économie. Et c'est grâce à la garde côtière que nos eaux sont protégées. Elle assure la fluidité du trafic maritime, maintient une présence forte dans l'Arctique et mène des opérations de recherche et sauvetage. En fait, en moyenne, la garde côtière sauve 15 vies par jour. Et même pour ceux qui vivent loin de nos côtes, les Canadiens de partout au pays dépendent des marchandises qui entrent dans nos ports et qui en sortent pour subvenir à leurs besoins. Le fait de garder le Saint-Laurent libre de glace permet à tout le monde, des exportateurs aux agriculteurs, d'acheminer leurs produits vers les marchés. Just down the road from the busiest port in Canada, I don't have to tell anyone here how important it is to not only keep our waters open for business, but to protect our coasts and our oceans. Coast Guard ships like the one behind me do everything from responding to spills to helping with ocean research. In fact, a key part of our government's historic oceans protection plan is investing in the Coast Guard. It's up to us to make sure they can keep doing this vital work. A few years from now, when the new ships are conducting science surveys and our shipbuilding industry is doing better than ever, we'll know that this investment helped put us on that path. My friends, when we support hardworking Canadians in highly skilled jobs in shipbuilding or operating Coast Guard vessels, we invest in our future. Once again, it's great to be back home in Vancouver. I'm now very happy to take questions from media. Uh, Renee Filipponi from CBC News. Uh, my question for you today is uh, families of soldiers who died in Afghanistan feel betrayed by the government for not being included in the dedication of the Kandahar cenotaph. What do you have to say to those people that are upset about that decision and will you make it public? Uh, the uh, respect we hold and the way we celebrate uh, those who've chosen to serve Canada through our military, uh, in including and especially those who stepped up in Afghanistan, knows no bounds. Uh, that's why we are working with DND to uh, make sure we understand what that decision they took was around the cenotaph and ensure uh, that it is a, a monument that will be uh, there for everyone uh, who wants to remember and celebrate uh, those veterans who. Uh, who stood for Canada uh, on far away in faraway lands. So is that a commitment from you then that you will make this public? We are working with the uh, Department of National Defense to make sure uh, that this is done right. En français? Okay. Uh, nous reconnaissons à quel point c'est important de célébrer et de soutenir uh, ceux qui choisissent de servir notre pays, uh, particulièrement ceux qui ont servi en Afghanistan avec tant de bravoure et d'honneur. Uh, nous, uh, nous sommes en train de uh, demander uh, au département de la Défense nationale pour mieux comprendre la décision qu'ils ont prise par rapport au Sénotaf et s'assurer qu'il uh, y a des choix faits uh, qui vont uh, faciliter l'accès uh, pour tout le monde, surtout pour les vétérans et leurs familles. Prime Minister, a question on the Uyghurs. Uh, would you be prepared to use the Magnitsky Act to impose uh, economic sanctions on uh, specific Chinese officials known to play critical roles in the surveillance and detention system of uh, Muslim Uyghurs in China's Yinjiang province? Is that Standing up for human rights is something that this government has consistently done uh, at home and around the world, and we will continue to. I have raised on multiple occasions the plight of the Uyghurs in, uh, in Western China uh, with Chinese authorities and leadership, and we will continue uh, to make sure uh, that uh, the Chinese government knows that there is tremendous concern uh, from Canada and indeed from around the world uh, for the fate of and the plight 
of uh, this Muslim majority in Western uh, minority in Western China. Uh, we're going to continue uh, to apply pressure and make sure that uh, Canada and others are standing up unequivocally for the defense of human rights. And we'll uh, look at uh, possible tools as we continue our advocacy and uh, and uh, uh, human rights work. Uh, Melanie Nagy, CPP News. Considering all the discussion regarding abortion and women's reproductive rights south of the border, that discussion is happening here. Andrew Shearer has said he won't reopen the debate, but he hasn't clearly said whether he'd stop MPs from entering private members' legislation. What do you have to say to that, particularly to Canadians worried about that? Canadians deserve to know that their government will unequivocally stand up for women's rights and stand up for women's rights to choose. Uh, the discussion on whether or not someone's going to allow a debate to reopen or not is a complete distraction. The issue is, will conservative politicians stand up and defend women's rights? That is the one thing they won't answer. Uh, we need to make sure that the hard work fought for by generations of women and their allies over the past years and decades uh, continues to hold strong and that no one uh, but the woman herself gets to decide when and with whom she starts a family. And just really quickly, can you update us on the situation with Philippines and the garbage? Where's that garbage going to go? How much is it costing us to uh, get back? We have uh, continued to engage with the Philippines uh, in recent weeks, but also over the past years on the issue of uh, the garbage uh, in the Philippines. Uh, we uh, are looking forward to having a solution to uh, present to, uh, uh, to Canadians shortly and to, uh, and to uh, our Filipino partners. Uh, we're going to continue to work on this because this is uh, a situation that is uh, unacceptable and has gone on for far too long. Prime Minister Trudeau and Mitu Garcha with Global BC. I want to ask you about an investigation into the RCMP allegedly removing members from the force on the basis of their disability. And I want to ask you if you still have confidence in the RCMP's processes given these allegations that Mounties charter rights are being violated and that they're being removed on the basis of their disability. Uh, it is unacceptable for anyone uh, to be removed uh, from uh, their job and their livelihood uh, on the basis of disability. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, men and women who serve uh, in our RCMP or in any uh, institution uh, have full opportunities to continue to serve regardless of disabilities. Uh, we're going to be working with the RCMP and other institutions to make sure uh, that people's rights, uh, charter rights and disability rights are always uh, properly defended and upheld. And in relation to today's announcement, you mentioned the Conservative government had promised 10 shifts but failed to fund them. How do you plan to bring in 16 on time and on budget? Well, I think one of the things we recognize is that as a government, uh, we've seen the importance of protecting our coasts. On a personal level, uh, reopening the Kitsilano Coast Guard base that the Heart for Government had closed uh, was incredibly satisfying because I would spent uh, parts of my childhood sailing in Jaffa Jericho Beach and I knew how important it is uh, to demonstrate a deep commitment to protecting our coasts, to protecting our waters, and protecting British Columbians and indeed all Canadians who make a living or uh, 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 pass recreational time uh, on the water. That's why consistently over the past four years we've worked with uh, the Coast Guard, we've worked with our partners, uh, Indigenous and others, uh, to build the capacity. Um, from the announcement of reopening the Kitsilano Coast Guard base to a couple of years ago in this very spot launching Canada's Oceans Protection Plan, uh, which is leading world-class spill response and accident response uh, that will make sure uh, that our oceans are properly protected and our, the people who are along our coasts uh, are, uh, are, uh, are properly cared for. To this announcement today that the Coast Guard that has an average ship age of about 38 years is going to get that full renewal. Uh, I have tremendous confidence in the extraordinary women and men who work in our shipyards across this country in their capacity uh, to deliver the excellent ships that our Coast Guard needs and quite frankly that Canadians need to make sure that our coasts are protected and safe for everyone.
Valérie Gamache, Radio-Canada. Euh, quels sont les projets sur lesquels pourrait soumissionner ce troisième joueur? Parce que là, on comprend dans vos annonces qu'il reste, qu reste les brises glaces, mais il n'y a rien d'autre. Euh, il, il reste euh, beaucoup de choses à, à faire. On sait que l'ambition de renouveler euh, la flotte de la garde côtière euh, représente énormément d'investissements dans les prochaines années. Euh, et d'avoir un troisième chantier naval va nous permettre d'assurer non seulement une industrie de, de construction navale euh, très réussie à travers le pays, mais l'équipement dont nos forces armées et la garde côtière vont avoir besoin dans les années à venir pour protéger notre littoral qui est euh, la plus longue sur la planète. Avez-vous l'impression maintenant de traiter équitablement les trois chantiers euh, navaux, soit euh, C-SPAN, Irving et Davy? Euh, évidemment, on reconnaît que l'addition d'un troisième chantier naval euh, représente une vraie opportunité pour la Davy. On a hâte de voir euh, leur soumission pour euh, être qualifié pour être ce troisième chantier naval. Euh, il va y avoir euh, beaucoup de travail. On reconnaît qu'à deux chantiers navals, on n'a pas assez de capacité pour subvenir aux besoins et de la garde côtière et de nos, euh, de nos forces armées. Et donc, euh, on a très hâte de voir euh, la qualité du travail qui va se faire euh, euh, par des Canadiens d'un bout à l'autre de ce pays dans les années à venir. And now in English, One of the things we recognize is the needs of the Coast Guard uh, represent a significant opportunity to invest uh, in Uh, the great women and men who work in our shipyards right across the country. Uh, Canada has the world's longest coastline, and Canadians know it's absolutely essential that we protect it, that we patrol it. Uh, and that's why giving the Coast Guard uh, the tools they need to keep Canadians safe, to keep our waters safe and secure, uh, is absolutely essential. Uh, we recognize, though, with the uh, significant investments we're making uh, in our, our, uh, our Navy, Uh, the significant investments we're making in the Coast Guard uh, is going to be more than the two active shipyards we have right now in our national shipbuilding strategy are going to be able to, to handle on their own. That's why we're announcing uh, that we are opening a process towards a third Uh, uh, third uh, shipbuilding facility in this country. Uh, we recognize that it's an opportunity for Davy uh, to apply to become that third uh, shipbuilding facility uh, because there will be a tremendous amount of work in the coming years uh, for uh, workers in our shipbuilding industry right across the country from coast to coast to coast. Last question. Hi, Ben Mussett from the Vancouver Courier. Um, Many harm, advocate, harm reduction advocates and health experts believe that safe supply, a government-regulated supply of opioids, is the only solution to the overdose crisis. Um, is your government supportive of safe supply to prevent future deaths? Uh, we support evidence, an evidence-based approach to uh, countering this terrible opioid epidemic that uh, is hitting not just in BC but right across the country. Uh, we have been dismayed to see conservative governments stepping back from the harm reduction uh, programs that have been so successful here in uh, BC and elsewhere. Uh, we're going to continue to make decisions based on science. We've already moved forward on uh, making it easier for the prescription of uh, our artificial alternatives uh, to, uh, to uh, people who are suffering from addictions. Uh, we're going to continue to look at uh, the tools that we can have uh, to support people uh, through their struggles with addiction, to get them to a place of healthy and, uh, health and safety, uh, and to make sure uh, that we're moving forward to put an end uh, to this ongoing opioid epidemic once and for all. So does that mean your government is considering safe supply as a potential solution? We are always going to be uh, listening to and uh and learning from uh, experts and researchers who are very much engaged in this. Our approach is based on evidence, how to keep communities safe, how to keep Canadians safe, how to treat uh, addiction and provide the support uh, that people need as we move forward. Uh, Unlike conservatives who tend to base their decisions on ideology, uh, we will look at best practices and evidence and move forward in the right way for Canadians. Thank you. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.